Ignite Sessions celebrating Positive Grid's 10th anniversary. Today I'm using Bias Effects 2 specifically with some of my own custom presets. In this video I'm going to chat to you guys about why your guitar playing might have plateaued and how to break down the walls that are hindering your progress. It's so easy to hit a plateau when it comes to anything creative, especially when it comes down to instruments. Sometimes you might not even be aware that you're sat making really slow progress or even no progress at all. We want to overcome these plateaus so we can break through and reach the next step of our playing, to expand our skills, to improve our abilities, and to find new inspiration with an instrument that already feels super familiar to us. Or it might not. <laughs> these are all things that you're going to experience on like an ongoing loop throughout your guitar journey. I don't think this ever goes away. So even when you're looking at like the best of the best players, the absolute greats, it's likely that they have hit a plateau somewhat recently. Recently, maybe, uh, maybe the plateaus aren't quite as big, but they'll definitely be facing the same sort of things um, that everyone else is facing, regardless of what kind of stage you're at in your guitar journey. So how do we go about recognising a guitar playing plateau and why? Why has our guitar playing plateaued? Number one, and we are also guilty of doing this, you are not practising, you are just noodling. <laughs> is fun and we all love to do it, but if it's the only thing that you're doing whenever you reach for your guitar, it's holding you back. Do you find yourself playing the same random things, be it licks or songs, over and over again without really learning anything new? So you may be wondering why, like, surely if I just pick up a guitar and kind of like play and play what I want, then I'll be getting better at something. And kind of, yeah, to an extent, you'll be getting better at the things that you keep playing over and over again every time that you reach for your guitar. But you're subconsciously playing the things that you're already super comfortable and confident with. It's really natural to want to play the things that you're already good at because you're going to enjoy playing them. It's that personal sense of satisfaction that you're like, you kind of feel accomplished at what you're already playing, but the real progress comes when you sound bad. Sounding bad gives you a lot of direction and focus to become better at that thing that you sound bad at, which is going to result in progress. So I will get to the point now. How do we fix this? I have two words for you. Practice routine. Actually, no, I have five words for you. Practice routine and no noodling. <laughs> An ideal practice routine would look like some warm-ups, some technical exercises and then learning a new thing, be it a new solo or a new song or a new technique, just something new. It doesn't even necessarily have to be something new, obviously that's quite a challenge to do every single time that you sit down to practice guitar, um, but aim for like something new or something that you want to learn um, and then continue to develop that in your playtime at the kind of like back end of each practice session, if that makes sense. Ideally, you want to try and make these things line up if you can. So uh, the things that you're practicing in your warm ups and your technical exercises should be similar to what you're then going to go on and use when you're actually playing guitar. Uh, so, for example, if I had the intention of learning a guitar solo that used a lot of legato, then I would warm up and do technical exercises on legato technique because then when it comes to actually like uh, playing the thing that you want to play or want to learn uh, you're going to be much more kind of like warmed up for it and the entire practice routine is going to be so much more effective. That was probably the longest and biggest point on my list so we just had to get that one out of the way uh, but now on to point two you aren't expanding your style, you're focusing too much on the same genres and it's leading to lack of inspiration. Now this particular point was a pretty big deal for me. I started making way more progress when I went to music college and I was faced with a lot more styles and genres that I hadn't played before um, and it really helped me to progress and I got a lot better from it. And to be totally honest with you, it's actually kind of like harder than you would think to do this, for some people at least. Uh, so for me specifically, uh, I was quite young at this age, so I was like 15, 16, um, and I really loved metal. <laughs> much else so you know 
finding the kind of like uh, initiative and kind of motivation to play genres and styles that I wasn't that much a fan of was really difficult. If this is something that you can relate to, then ultimately my suggestion is that you do explore other genres. Give them the chance, um, it might take a little bit of time to kind of come around to them, uh, but you might find something that you actually really like. Another great way, other than just kind of like listening to these other genres, is to actually try and learn songs from other genres. You will subconsciously start to take things from it, and it'll start to kind of like beautifully blossom into your own playing, making you more of an individual and you're gonna have your own kind of like unique voice that way. Number three, and this is kind of similar to the last point, but you are focusing too much on one technique or one skill rather than aiming for improvement in all areas. <laughs> that can cause a plateau again because we really like to feel good about what we are already good at. <laughs> or you've just hit a point where you've been hanging on that particular technique for too long and there's other flaws in other areas of your playing that are preventing you from going forward with that particular technique. For example, you might be focusing on alternate picking speed and getting faster with that, but you've hit a wall and you can't go faster than, I don't know, 140 beats per minute. And that's because your picking hand needs work, right? So maybe you need to come away from the alternate picking, focus on down picking only to kind of like help boost your stamina um, and your consistency, and then go back to alternate picking, and you'll probably find that you've broken through another wall and you've broken past that plateau, and then you can kind of continue to make progress again. Basically, just try to mix it up every now and again. Don't get too focused on one particular technique, Try and practice kind of a nice variation of techniques. And if it's been a little while since you've made any progress on that technique, be it getting a little bit tighter or neater with that particular technique or getting faster, um, and if you're not making that progress, go away from that technique, go and focus on something else and then come back later and you'll probably find you'll start making progress again. Guitar is so weird like that. <laughs> Number four, you lack motivation, goals and routine. Do you find it a chore to practice and play? Are you excited to play? And if you're not, then you've got to ask yourself why. Maybe you don't like what you're playing. Maybe you're intimidated by others. Maybe you're feeling quite lost and aimless. Or maybe you just have no routine and no kind of, no structure to what you're doing. All of those things are completely in your control and in your hands to make a change. At the end of the, at the, end of the guitar, at the end of the day, <laughs> Guitar should be fun, you've got to play what inspires you and use others as motivation as to where you want to aim to be. And as I said earlier, plan your practice routine, it's going to keep you tip top and it's going to ensure that you make steady progress. It's so normal to lack motivation from time to time, I get it all the time, but you need to ask yourself why. You've got to figure out what you can do to help yourself and change that to make you feel passionate about picking up the guitar again. Point number five, have you tried dabbling in songwriting or coming up with something more original? These days, personally, I feel like I'm enjoying myself the most and making the most progress when I am songwriting. This has really helped me to overcome different plateaus in my guitar playing, like songwriting is kind of a different area of it and it's so free and there are no boundaries, you can do absolutely whatever you want which is so rewarding. The idea of no boundaries or rules when it comes to songwriting really helps to take away the pressure and the box that you might find yourself in when it comes to guitar playing. I highly suggest that you try writing something original um, and if not that then just doing some improvisation. I know earlier I said absolutely no noodling under any circumstances, but constructive noodling with a goal in mind is kind of acceptable. Um, I really think that this can kind of help spark new emotions and approaches to guitar and playing itself. It can really help to kind of break down those plateaus. If you found any of these points helpful or useful, I'd love for you to put them to practice and share your progress. You can upload your progress using the hashtag FuturePositive to have a shot at being featured on Positive Grid's socials and website. I would absolutely love for you guys to put these things to practice and 
would love to see that the things that I've been rambling on at you for the last 10 minutes were actually helpful, so yeah. <laughs> Don't forget to head on over to positivegrid.com to celebrate Positive Grid's 10th anniversary with us. Thank you so much for watching and thanks so much to Positive Grid for having me and I will catch you later. See ya!